difference between how it's defined. The other thing that we notice is that um, the other thing we notice is that each of them is defined with a, a, with a voltage unit in there, but the difference between them, like C is defined as Q over volts, so it's Coulomb over volts. L is defined as volts over amp per second. And uh, the resistance is defined as volts over amp. Uh, uh, and let's just look at the units for a second. C is defined as coulombs per volt. L is defined as volts per amp per second. And R is defined as volts over amp. But what is amp? Amp is coulomb per second. So if we rewrite that, coulomb per second, and then L is volts over amp is coulomb per second per second, coulomb per second squared, and then C is defined as coulomb per volts, we kind of see something interesting developing. Uh, coulomb is like the, the variable itself. This is the first derivative of the variable. And this is the second derivative of the variable. So the Coulomb is like an important unit. How much charge you can store is the capacitance. The derivative of the charge is the current. So resistance depends on how much current you can allow. And then the inductance is the derivative of the current, which tells you if the current changes, what's going to be the voltage that's induced in the inductor. So it seems like current, it seems like uh, Coulomb, its derivative and its second derivative are important quantities. How about its third derivative? Is it important? In other words, Coulomb per second cubed, it ends up that it's not important. The rate of change of the current, the second derivative of the rate of change of current is not important. And the integral of the Coulomb, if you go back the other way, it's also not important. Okay, in physics one, what other concept do we know where the variable is derivative and its second derivative have a meaning, but not the third derivative or the integral of the variable? It's just the, the variable, the first derivative, and the second derivative. Yeah, physics one. So the variable is x, its derivative is velocity, its second derivative is the acceleration. Hmm. And its third derivative has no really meaning. Uh, you could take the derivative of acceleration, but there's no, there's nothing that depends on the derivative of acceleration in terms of a force, you know. So a lot of those equations that we have in physics one we're going to see them popping up again in, uh, in uh, electricity. For example, if you have a spring and a block, and I let go of the block, this is, this is just so amazing. Because now you're really seeing how physics is a un united front. Electricity and magnetism is not something completely, oh, it's way out here. Mechanics is something way out there. They're really unrelated at all. Physics, too, is down here. They're not related at all. No, really, it's one and the same thing. It's just two sides of the same coin. What's the potential energy formula, the equation? What's the potential energy that I give the uh, block? It's ha half k a squared half times its uh, spring constant times its amplitude squared. When I let go of it, it comes and uh, by the time it reaches the middle, it has kinetic energy, half mv squared. <clears throat> How is k defined? What's the definition of the spring constant? Uh, remember, it was Hooke's law, F equals kx. So k is defined to be how much force you need 
to uh, stretch it a certain distance. Okay. Uh, how is m defined? I guess you can say this is the definition of m. It's f uh, f over a. Right. Okay. Uh, v is the derivative of the uh, the what we let me let me say a, a is the x because uh, the potential energy that it has at any point is a, a half kx squared, right? So let's just keep it like that. And then v is the derivative of x. Can we make the same equation of this for that case here? Uh, let's see what's going to replace. It? what you're going to see is that the electrical equivalent of that is this. I'm going to go uh, more in detail of this on uh, next time we come back. I'll, I'll derive the equation for this circuit. But for now, without actually deriving it, we're going to predict what the equation should be. Okay? Uh, when I close it, Okay, um, the battery is going to start pushing. The, this is the exact electrical equivalent of that. It's the exact electrical equivalent. I let go, and I release it, and the, and the two fight against each other. The kinetic energy and the potential energy keeps keep switching. Same thing here. I release this. Okay, what happens? Charge begins to build up. This one doesn't like it. Back EMF until the charge builds up on the capacitor. And then the capacitor will drive the current. And then the energy will go from the capacitor to the inductor. Capacitor to inductor, they're going to switch. OK, right now you, don't, you might not see exactly the details of what's going to happen. But what's going to be the potential energy stored in the, uh, the, the, potential energy stored in the uh, capacitor at any instant? Well, we've done that already. What is the potential energy stored in a capacitor? It has three forms, right? Q squared over 2C. Or uh, half CV squared. Or the other one was half QV. Right? What does the, which one of those does it resemble? Now, the, re the capacitor takes the place of which one? Now, notice the potential energy in the spring is half kx squared, right? So x, the electrical equivalent of x is what? Well, I just had it over there. It, ha it was the, the charge, the charge's derivative, the charge's second derivative, right? The, the, the charge was, uh, the capacitor was based on the charge. The charge's derivative was the resistor. The charge's second derivative was the inductor. So everything there that has to do with the x, x is like the q. So the potential energy stored in the spring is this potential energy stored in the capacitor, OK? So look at this one right here. There you go, q squared, x squared, q squared. So this takes the place of potential energy is half kx squared. Right? That takes the place of that because the Q takes the place of the X. Now, the only reason it looks a little different is that the C is on the bottom here, right? The C takes the place of 1 over K. Okay? Why? Because K was defined as F over X. How is the C defined? as q over delta v. So v, delta v takes the place of the f. 
Q takes the place of